So in this video we're going to analyze the Emetet sample that we've unpacked in a previous video and we're going to look at some functions created by the malware author and also some legitimate Windows API functionality and show how we can analyze the stack to understand what the malware is doing. So like I say this is the Emetet sample we've used in previous videos. The only difference with my analysis is that if I go to file and change command line if you go back to the behavior analysis video, the malware unpacked itself and copied itself to a new location. So what I've done is put the malware on disk in that location, which is app data local. And in my instance, it loaded, like created a file called loader tangent and changed the malware's name to loader tangent. Now that'll change, uh, that could, you know, that'll probably be different on your machine because it's dynamically created. And then it also passes this argument as well. So other than that, there's no other changes that I've made to my setup. So what we'll do is we'll jump to the entry point by doing debug and run. And we're now at the entry point of the malware. And what we can see here is, first of all, what's relevant to the stack and the last video is we have this window here. And this just shows parameters that have been pushed onto the stack. And we know they're parameters because they have the ESP plus. And at the bottom, we have the stack window which is made up of these three columns. The first column is the addresses within the stack memory. So as I move down these and click on these going downwards, these are higher address space, but they are lower down the stack. And as we go higher up the stack, you can see we have lower address space. So the top of the stack is here at 33FAB8, and these blue brackets indicate each stack frame. So this is one stack frame for one function, and as I move down here, this is a stack frame for another function. Within this column here is what's actually been pushed onto the stack. So these could be addresses or data that could be used by these functions. So what we're gonna look at is a couple of functions created by the malware author, and we're gonna look at some Windows functions. The malware, the functions created by the malware author are these two here. So this ABAEC9 and ABBE17. Now, if I just ho hover over these, we can see that there's a bunch of hashes here that are being moved into a bunch of variables. And again, we know these are variables from the previous video because they begin with EVP minus. And what these are doing is almost like an anti-analysis technique for the malware. What it's done is it's obfuscated the names of the Windows APIs that it's going to import. And the reason for that is quite often when I'm analyzing a piece of malware, what I will do is I will, you know, you're not gonna step through every line of code to analyze a piece of malware. You're gonna look for things of interest. And one way of doing that is right clicking within the window here, scrolling down to search for, selecting current module, and then just pressing into modular calls. Now this is where I'd expect to see functions that have been imported by the malware, but at the minute there's only one. This is processor feature present. So you know that's no good. I can't set any breakpoints on any additional APIs of interest. And like I say, it's because they've all been hashed. So what we'll do is we'll start stepping through this and this will all become a bit clearer. So our first command here where our instruction pointer is at is push EVP. So the current EVP, if we look in the register window on the right hand side is 33FA0. And if we look at the stack, we can see here it's the base pointer of the current stack frame. So we're gonna push this onto the stack. So when our function's done running, it can then return to that address. We need to move our current stack pointer into EVP. So this is FAB4, and this is pointing to EVP where we need to return to. So we're going to move that. And then we're going to subtract 420 from ESP. So it's creating space on the stack and it needs to subtract because it's going up into this lower address space. So when we press this, it's going to create a lot of space on the stack. And we can see there it's changed. The next three commands are all push instructions, so it's going to push data onto the stack. So it's saying push EBX. And if we look on the right hand side, we can see EBX is this value here, 7E FDE triple zero. So when I step over that, we can see that's now been pushed onto the stack. And then we have push ESI and EDI, which is, you know, if you look on the right hand side, there's nothing in there. But you can see the stack being updated along with the parameters window. 
So this first function here, this ABA EC9, I'm going to step into that and we'll see a new stack frame being created, which we can here. And again, we've got the function prolog, push EDP, move ESP into EDP. And again, it's going to create space on the stack for this new stack frame. So it's subtracting 630 from ESP. And like I say, each instruction here is just moving each uh, hash value into uh, these variables. So as I scroll down, obviously I don't want to step through each line of code. But as I move down, we can then see there's a couple of functions here for hover over. And without going into these, what these are doing is these are deobfuscating the hashes and converting them to their true names, their true Windows API names. So I'm just going to go down to this command here by doing debug run into a selection. And it's going to add, so it's, you know, but essentially this is the function epilog. So we have the function prolog at the start. When the function is run, we have the function epilog to clean up the stack. So it's adding C to ESP here because to remove from the stack, remember it has to move downwards into the higher address space. So as I click over that, we then have the command move EVP to ESP. So our current EVP is 35680. And if I scroll down here on the stack, we can see 335680 is this location here. And all it's doing is going back to our old stack pointer. So if I click that, it cleans up the stack. We then have pop EVP. And then we have the return address, which is ABCDA8 which is where we were before. So if I click step over, you can see on the left hand side, our instruction pointer is at ABC DA8, and it's the instruction after the one we've just stepped into. So again, I'm sort of explaining what the malware is doing regarding the hashed functions, but also trying to show you know how the stack plays into this. This next function does the same, it's just got different hashed um, Windows API, so I'm just gonna step over that. But as I do that, if you look here, we can see a call here and it's a call to a function named AC0BD8. This is one of the hashed functions. So when I step over this, you can see now the name has been changed to its true name of get module file name W. When I now do a search for current module into modular strings, we can see this has now been populated with the Windows API. So if I could, you know, if there was anything of interest there, I could start setting breakpoints on create file. Um, what else do we have of interest here? Get temp path W perhaps, you know, but just whatever whatever jumps out and you you know you want to look in to analyze further. I'm not gonna do it in this video because it's more focused on looking at the stack. And what we'll do now is we'll concentrate on some le legitimate Windows API. So let's say you know you've got a Windows API that's interest, you want to see what the malware is doing with it. Now I'm just gonna scroll down here because there's some that I've already picked out that we can use. Uh, but if we look here, we can see this, the final call of the main function, which is going to exit the process and the malware will end. And there's this function before it here, this AVAC49. Again, this has been written by the malware author. I'm just going to hit enter on that to jump into it. And the next one I want to look, who is it, look at sorry, is this ABAAT. I'm going to hit enter on that again. And I'm looking at this get Windows directory W function. So I'm not actually at this instruction at the minute. If you look on the right hand side, you can see my instruction pointer is still at ABCDAD. So I've got this uh, address here highlighted, ABAAT for this push EVP instruction. And I'm just gonna do debug, run into a selection, and we can see the EAIP has now been, has been updated. And this is where my instruction pointer is now uh, pointing to. So same again, you know, we've got the function prolog, push EVP, you know, it's setting up the stack. Um, but like I say, I want to know what's going on, you know, what's being passed here to get Windows directory W. We can see this push 104, push EAX. And there is a plugin for X64 called X Analyzer, which I will link to in the, the video description. But if I right click on this area now, select X Analyzer and do analyze function, we can see we have this get windows directory, which is the name of the function, but we can also see it's given us um, data regarding, well, information regarding what's being pushed onto the stack. So I've already searched for here, get windows directory W. And if I click on this here, and it tells you here quite simply, retrieves the path of the windows directory. 
and it gives you the information regarding the parameters. So we have this LP buffer, it's telling you it's a pointer to a buffer that receives the path of the Windows directory. And then we have this U size, it's just telling you the maximum size of the buffer. So if I go back to my x64, x32 here, we can see here that EAX is going to store the path of the Windows directory. So if I step over this, these instructions, and if I just do right click on EAX and do follow and dump, we can see we've got this spare address space here. And if I step over that and then step over the function, because I don't want to analyze the Windows directory code, I just want to see what's returned by that function. We can see now that this has now been updated to show the C Windows path. So again, you'll have seen as well on the right hand side, you'll have seen the stack been updated and the parameters window be updated as well. Um, but what we're also going to look at is this get volume information W. So again, I'm going to select the first command that's being pushed onto the stack, do debug run until selection. And again, through X Analyzer, we can see all the parameters that are being passed onto the stack. So same again here, if I just do a quick search for this API, again, it tells us what this does. So it retrieves information about the file system and volume associated with the specified root directory. So this is why the malware's pulled the root directory, because it wants to now get information about the file system and the volume. So again, we have information, it's telling us what the parameters are. And the one that I'm gonna pull out just for this demo is this one here, LP volume serial number. And it says a pointer to a variable that receives the volume serial number. Okay, so if we go back to X32 again, and I'm just going to step to that parameter, and we can see it's pushing this address here, AC0D98. I'm going to right click on that, do following dump, and we can see we've got this space allocated now to pull this information back. So as I step over these push instructions again, we can see the stack being updated on the right hand side. We can see the parameters being pushed on. And I'm just going to step over this function. Again, the function is going to run now. It's going to make that call to that function. And we can see here, it's returned this information here. Now, if I just go to open up CMD, and if I just type in the command vol, and put in the C drive, you can see here that the serial number for my VM is EAA5-35EC, and it's reversed here due to the endianness, but you can see that's the information that it's pulled back. Now, why is it doing that? So let's have a look, you know, Let's have another look at the code here and see what we can find. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to step over. We can see the function epilog, and it's going to return back to just after the function we called. And one that I am interested in is in this next one here. Just let me take a look. It's this one here, this create mutex w. So again, I'm just going to go to the, just above the push instruction and do debug run until selection. I can right click on this and do X analyzer analyze function and again I can just do a quick search for create mutex w and this tells us here that it creates or opens a named or unnamed mutex object now that might not mean much to you at the minute but malware will often create mutexes and the reason for that is if it infects a device it will create a mutex to say this device has already been infected often you know if the device you know they find the malware runs on the device again you know it gets compromised again it will check for the evidence of a mutex if it finds it it knows it's already been compromised it doesn't need to run again another reason for it could be it may create a unique indicator for a compromised device and that's what's happening with this example here so if i just scroll down we can see what we have is the lp name which i'm interested in it's just the name of the mutex object and i'll show why it's pulled that information before so it pulled the Windows root folder or directory. And that was then so it could identify the volume serial number of that drive. And what it's doing now is like I say, it's creating a mutex using that information. So again, if we look at LP name here, and if I just step to that instruction, we can actually see in EAX at the top, here's what it's creating. It's creating a mutex called global slash slash and then it's using that unique identifier, the serial uh, number of the volume um, to create the unique mutex. So as I step over that, that's going to run and it's now created that mutex. So like I say, that should hopefully follow on nicely from the previous video. You know, I explained what stack memory was, how it works. In this video, I've showed how you can analyze 
functions created by the malware author. I've showed how you can analyze legitimate Windows functionality and also how stack memory ties into that. Hopefully that was of use. In the next video, we're going to cover what PEB traversal is. And again, we'll be using X32 for that. So I hope to see you in the next video.